Hey everyone, this is George Gross, and welcome back to another episode of Mindset Monday. Hey everyone, uh, it is uh, Mindset Monday. Welcome back. And as you know, I record these ahead of time, and I'm actually recording this on September 28th. And uh, I, I actually live in Central Florida, September 28th, right now. Um, I had plans to do some other things today, but um, Hurricane Ian is headed our way. Now, I don't know how big of an impact it's going to have, but um, I, I wanted to record today because uh, just because I wanted to have some time and I was thinking about, um, I'm nervous about this. This is a new area for me. I'm Canadian. Uh, I don't I don't really understand um, what this is going to be like. By the time I think it actually comes to us and um, I think it's not going to be a hurricane, but a tropical storm, but we're just, you know, like, but as a special name, it's probably still pretty bad. So who knows what it's going to be like. But um, I just want to take, we've been prepping and stuff like that. And I just need to kind of get away um, from thinking about that, turn off the news for a little bit. We're prepared uh, for hopefully whatever comes our way. And I hope everyone that um, uh, is listening or uh, safe or uh, it's just it's just a little bit nerve wracking. And uh, I think I was thinking the reason I wanted to record this day is because I was thinking about uh, I definitely have some anxiety and I'm not just talking about this, but I, I, I've always dealt with anxiety. And I think sometimes the reason I was thinking about recording this today is the anxiety that I have actually makes me really proactive in some things that I want to be extra prepared. I want to do this. And I think that actually helps me. And it, it reminded me of this idea that sometimes like our, our, our biggest weaknesses are also our strengths. And I, I remember, I, I kind of always thought about this, but I remember actually this really putting, being put into my, um, for, uh, into my mind when I read a, a book by Malcolm Gladwell, and he talks about David and Goliath. And he, he kind of shares in that, in, in the book, and I'm not quoting it, and just kind of going off my memory. There's something that's really interesting is that, you know, the, the David and Goliath story is kind of this underdog, you know, David, uh, you know, beating Goliath and how... Uh, how weird that was but the the story actually is he he goes about it uh, he talks about how goliath actually you know was probably really slow uh you know probably struggled you know to move around and actually the perceptions of david who was smaller also meant he was quicker had the ability to you know do certain things because of his size that he benefited so that story is kind of perception of the weak beating the strong but, you know, when Gladwell talked about it, he, he thought about how actually uh, we didn't necessarily see, um, maybe we need to rethink about our perception of what strengths and weaknesses actually are. And one of the analogies he shared was he talked about um, people with dyslexia often actually become CEOs of companies. And again, I'm going off of memory. So please feel to correct me in the comments if I'm misquoting this. I'm pretty sure that was the analogy that he used. And the, the reality that he shared when he talked about this is that um, because of dyslexia, many people actually have uh, are very detailed focus. They're, they're, they see small things in a way. And so actually that is a strength. And it, it is kind of making me think about this notion of anxiety. And, um, you know, as I, I've talked about before, I have depression, even though I talk about Mindset Monday, I think that, you know, um, there's in ways that I, I don't say I struggle with depression. I have depression. And the reason I don't say I struggle with depression is because it's something I have, but it's not who I am. But I also think that it makes me very empathetic. And one of the things that I think helps me as a dad is when I see my kids struggling with things, um, and maybe not, not the best approach, but I always try to make them laugh because I never want them to, to necessarily feel the way I feel and having an understanding of that has kind of helped me. And I, I remember reading a story about Robin Williams, right? And he had depression and obviously, and it was actually someone talked about, that was one of the things that was one of the reasons that drove him to be so funny was that he wanted people not to feel that it, he felt and, and whether, however you see that, I see that as him utilizing something he struggled with to benefit others and to, you know, open up some doors for himself. And do we see that as a strength? Do we see his weakness? Now, obviously a horrible story, you know, um, how he, uh, you know, passed away and uh, things like that. But I try to look at the good parts of people's lives and, and find those things because um, that matters to me. 
And I know it's kind of a morbid story to think about, but I do try to find that good because sometimes it's really hard for me um, to do it, to do it in myself. And so I try to find it in others. And I think about this on a professional level. Some of the best teachers I've ever met, ever, honestly, were terrible students. They, they were terrible students. I, when I was a principal, I used to think that when kids got sent to the office, sometimes they'd get sent in. I'm like, is that all you did? Seriously? Is that it? Because I was a horrible kid. I used to get in so much trouble. And it actually made me better understand some of the things that kids dealt with and some of the struggles they actually had and to kind of be empathetic. And the reason I kind of bring up this analogy is that sometimes we, we almost, you know, look down upon um, our students who struggle, but not necessarily seeing some of the, the benefits of what they actually have through this process. What are they actually learning and how do we actually shift those strengths? And so for a lot of teachers that really struggled in school, I think one of the advantages that they have when they become teachers is that they have an understanding of kids who struggle because they were that kid. And what we now see, what we've now historically seen as a weakness might actually be an advantage for some of our teachers. And you think about it on the opposite side. Um, I've had, and I think about this specifically because maybe my own experience, I had math teachers who were just absolutely brilliant at math, who knew math inside out, were geniuses. And I struggled with them because they couldn't necessarily see um, why I would struggle because math had maybe become easy to them or something that they were really passionate about. And so we always kind of think about this, you know, like that we need to know our content and really need to understand that. But I think sometimes the benefit of struggling with your content is that you have a better empathy and understanding of actually, you know, seeing um, from a perspective of where kids actually struggle. And so I have been a big advocate of trying to find people's strengths, but I think I'm also trying to shift my own thinking to see that some of our weaknesses, if we utilize them, can be our strengths. I remember actually my uh, associate superintendent, deputy superintendent, Kelly Wilkins, she said, you know, one of your biggest strengths is also one of your biggest weaknesses, that you're, you're, how passionate you are. It has benefited you in so many ways, and you need to learn to harness it because sometimes I get so passionate that I would struggle with people who didn't have that same passion. And so, you know, you kind of kind of see both sides of that coin where I can get really, you know, emotionally involved, really upset about certain things because of my passion, but also led to things that were beneficial. So sometimes even our strengths become our weaknesses, but I think it's how you kind of shift your thinking, how you kind of look at different things. So I want you to really think as you're, as you're kind of listening to this today, what are some of the things that you maybe perceive as your own weaknesses, whether it's on a personal level, where, whether it's on a professional level, and really kind to trying to think about how do I actually look at my weakness, the thing that I struggle with? Like for me, my anxiety, um, about what is going on today in our world um, and how to use that to be overly prepared and make sure everything's okay. Um, how do we kind of look at some of those things as maybe a way we could shift our thinking to see how that can actually be a, a strength. And maybe when we start looking at that, we start trying to shift our own thinking with our, with our students, with the people in our lives, that some of their weaknesses actually are weaknesses in our own mind, but they can actually be seen as strengths if we learn to utilize them in a powerful way. So just something I was thinking about. And I think part of the reason I wanted to just get on here and share was to kind of take my mind off of things and just have, you know, conversation with this camera, hopefully uh, with you, but I would love to hear from you. So maybe share in the comments, some of your takeaways, um, some of the ways that you kind of shifted your own thinking about your own weaknesses and how they become strengths for you. I'd love to hear from you. So thanks so much for listening again to my Inset Monday. Thanks for um, just being with me during this time uh, while I'm nervous to listen to me rant just to kind of do something with this time so I'm not so nervous. But again, thanks for welcome and be joining me for another episode of Mindset Monday. I hope you have a wonderful week ahead. Thank you so much for all you do. Take care.